Hello again. This is the second part in a two-part series on using Newton's method to solve nonlinear equations. Now, you might remember from the first part that there's our nonlinear equation. I guess I've got it written up there as well. All right, this is cosine x minus x over 5. And we're trying to find the, a root of that equation. Now, a root of the equation is a value of x for which the equation equals 0. In graphical terms, it means it's where the, my equation, that, that's the function right there that's cosine x minus x over 5, it's where that curve crosses the x-axis. There are lots of good physical reasons why we'd want to do this kind of mathematical operation. The example I gave last time is a ballistics problem. We know that in the absence of wind resistance, projectiles follow parabolas. Well, if you want to know where the projectile hits the ground, you solve for where y equals 0. That's the root. Okay. So I don't, this doesn't have any physical meaning, but it's analogous to lots and lots of problems where they do have physical meaning. There's lots of good reasons why you'd want to find roots of an equation. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, we already showed that there's no good way to write out this solution analytically. You can't just solve for x. It doesn't work here. So you have to use a numerical method. You have to iterate. And by iterate, we means we start with an estimate, an initial guess, really, of the answer to the expression, or the, the root of the equation, and we go through an iterative process where we update our guess to make a new estimate of the answer, evaluate it, and if it's not, as, if it's, uh, not accurate enough, we'll go through the same iterative procedure again. So by going around and around and around, by iterating, by going through uh, the same calculation cycle over and over and over again, our estimate of the answer gets better and better. Now eventually we get to the point where it's accurate enough, we don't care anymore, it's time to stop. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, the process here is I'm going to start at x equal a half. Why a half? Who knows? It just, that looked like a good enough answer, or a good enough starting point. Many uh, numerical methods like this require that you give it an initial guess. The algorithm isn't smart enough to guess for you. So typically it'll ask you for a guess. This is one of those kinds of algorithms. And my initial guess is one half. Now I know that's not the right answer because I'm kind of cheating. I drew a picture of it here. Um, so we're going to start at x equal one half. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a well, here. Let's do it this way. We're going to make an estimate. We're going to make a tangent line to that function, and we're going to see where it crosses the x-axis. All right. Then we're going to evaluate the function at that point. And if that function is far away from the x-axis, we know we've got to do one more iteration. We'll draw another tangent line, and we'll keep repeating that cycle until the tangent line take is indistinguishable from the actual function. We're going to get closer and closer and closer to the exact solution. All right? So that's the, that's the game we're going to play here. Now, we need a tangent line. As soon as you think of tangent, you ought to be thinking derivative. And we are going to need a derivative. So let's write that out. If f of x equals cosine x minus x over 5, now uh, remember the derivative of cosine is negative sine and the derivative of x is just 1. So f prime, which is the derivative, is minus sine x minus 1 over 5. All right? Now we, we're going to need to make a line that expresses that tangent line. There's, there's the slope, but that's just the slope. That's not a line yet. So the line I've got to call something, and I guess I'll call it y to distinguish it from, from f of x. So y of x is going to be f at x0, which is my initial guess, plus the slope, also evaluated that initial guess, times, uh, let's see, I'm going to run out of room here. Let me move this up just a little bit. There times x minus x0. Okay, so that's the, that's the change in, in the position along the x-axis. And this is just y equals mx plus b. This is the same expression for a straight line that we learned in an algebra class, probably. Now, just as an aside, if uh, you're familiar with Taylor series expansions, this is a one-term Taylor series expansion. If you, if you uh, remember Taylor series, here, I'll write it out for you quick. Now, if you don't know what a Taylor series expansion is, don't worry about it. This is just a different way of describing that same thing. So if this is new to you, and you're, you, don't let it confuse you. And that, that uh, 
exclamation point is just factorial. Okay, this series goes on forever. It's an infinite series. And one of the reasons I'm writing this down is when your calculator is telling you a, a value with a trig function, say you want to find the sine of, I don't know, 23 degrees. You type in 23 sine. Inside, it's actually doing something pretty close to this. All right? And this it goes out in more and more terms in this series until it gets an accurate answer. Well, this is, there's a one-term Taylor series, two-term Taylor series, and there's more out here. Well, if you truncate it at one term, one, one uh, factorial is just one. That and that are exactly the same thing. So if you want to come at it from a Taylor series expansion, you can. All right, so there we go. Let's start writing down some numbers here. Now I'm going to need to erase this to make some room. So uh, get, that, get this out of the way. Let's start by saying x0 equals 1 half. And again, you got to guess something. I chose to guess this. If you want to guess something else, go ahead. All right, so f of x is now f of x0 plus f prime at x0 times x minus x0. Okay, we just wrote that down before. Now, I'm trying to find a root of this equation. I'm trying to find out where the uh, expression goes to 0, where the, it crosses the x-axis. So that means that has to be 0. Now, I can evaluate that. That's just a number because I know what x0 is. I already wrote that expression down, so I can evaluate that. That's x0. And I can solve for that thing right there. Okay, that's going to be my new guess for my answer. I've already guessed that it's 1 half. Well, we know that's not true because that's just a guess. So what we're going to do graphically is we're going to go out here somewhere. Right? Now, uh, to keep this short, Solving for that, x1 equals 1.644471. Okay? So that's about out here somewhere. Let me. That's pretty close. Well, that, if I draw a line down there, it's pretty clear that the function does not equal zero there. Alright, so I'm going to need to do another iteration. What I'm going to find out is that if I that f of x1 doesn't equal 0. It's not close, so that means i got to keep going. Well, fine, I did it once, I can do it again. What this is going to look like now is now I'm going to draw a tangent line back up from this new point, and you can see that the new tangent line is going to cross the axis a lot closer to the right answer than the first one did. So let's do this again. I'll do this exact same expression again, and I'll say 0 equals now f of x1 plus f prime of x1 times x minus x1. And I'll solve for this again, because again, we know this, we know this, we can figure that out, we know that. That's the only thing we don't know. One equation, one unknown, I'm in business. Okay, so x2, my next answer, is 1.308293. All right? Now, just you can look there and you can say, well, that's about 1.3. That must be getting pretty close. I went ahead and calculated the root using MathCAD. Okay, calculated using MathCAD. MathCAD actually did something like this inside. All right, I used, a, I used a program. You can do this on your calculator as well. If you have a TI calculator in HP or Sharp or something, it'll, it'll find roots for you. Go ahead and have the calculator tell you what we'll consider to be the exact answer. Let's see, 1.30644. That's the exact answer. So, we know we're not there yet. Well, let's just keep going. Let's do this one more time. And just erase all the ones. And we'll put the twos in there. I just erased it, but we know what x2 is. We can evaluate f of x2, f prime of x2, and solve for x one more time. When we do that, we'll find out that x3 equals 1.360, I'm sorry, I've got that backwards, 30644. Well, son of a gun, look at that. I got, the, I got the right answer. So there you are. This is how Newton's method works.